Yo, what is happening? What is going on? We are back with a Space Ghost who just came out with his third mock draft and I'm super excited. Garrett, what is happening, man? I really appreciate you doing these and his third mock draft has just arrived on my footsteps and I'm super excited, ready to go. I'm cooling, man. I pulled out the shades today. That's how we're ready to go I am. And uh, people always say, wait, why do you got those shades on? How can you see nothing? Man, it doesn't matter if you can't see anything. It's about the look, man. That's all that matters, right? That's what I'm saying, but no, what is happening, everyone? And uh, appreciate it, Space Ghost. I'm ready to see what you got going on here for Mock Draft 2022 NFL Mock Draft V3. Uh, I'm not very good. I'm not very good with the Roman numerals. I need to go back to school, but his third Mock Draft. Here is your standard order by the looks. Let's take a look. He typically read draft order from the draft network. So yeah, this is based off of current order. And he's also got some quarterback predictions. So we'll have to take a look at those. And then round one, a plus four extra picks as well, which I'm assuming are all the teams that are in the second round that don't have a first round selection. So, you know, subscribe to Space Ghost, man. Space Ghost! Space Ghost is on the horizon. Let's see what he's got going on. So first off, he's starting out with his 2021 starting quarterback. So we got currently nothing you know, too crazy. Obviously, this is your your current list of starters, the Saints, big three. <laughs> I like that. Anyway, uh, let's see here. So he's got his 2022 starting quarter. Oh, so he's got some projections here. A little bit, of, a little bit of snake, a little bit of surprise. Let's see what he's got. Okay, changes to NFC, AFC. So he's got some teams changes here. Panthers. Let's see where the Panthers. So there's some question marks. I'm assuming he's going to be in the market draft wise. So we'll have to keep a close eye out on that. Packers. Oh, Russell Wilson. I just now. I saw Russell Wilson traded to the Giants. Wilson! Wilson! I'm sorry! I'm sorry, Wilson! Wilson, I'm sorry! I'm sorry! Wilson! I can't! Wilson! Oh, actually, you know, this is this is one of those things like you may think it's crazy, but it's it's very possible the Giants have a have the best draft capital of anybody. So if they really wanted to make a move for like a Deshaun Watson, a Russell Wilson, doesn't you know they could definitely do it or Aaron Rodgers. It's definitely possible with those picks that they have. So I wouldn't put it all out there. I think they'll stick with Daniel Jones, but man, you don't know, man. It, it, when they get an opportunity, teams will say what they want to say. But at the end of the day, if they get a call and say, you know, we'll make this deal for for Russell Wilson, you know, get you, you know, yeah, they're probably gonna do it. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if this were to happen. Uh, Giants get Russell Wilson exchange for a first and a second this year in exchange also for a third or first rounder in 2023. Definitely could see that happening. So they at least keep one of their first rounders too to help Russell Wilson and probably build that offensive line with that pick. Uh, let's see what other changes you have here for the Saints. Famous Winston. I could see that happening. It's not really too surprising. I think he's going to be starting there year, uh, next season. Giants, we talked about that. We just saw that one. Oh, yeah, we missed the Packers. Where are the Packers? Oh, Jordan Love. Yep, that one. So Aaron Rodgers on the move here. We'll see where he ends up going. Seahawks. So TBD. Oh, are they going to use one of their first round draft picks on a quarterback? That's going to be something that'll be interesting. Over to the AFC side of the ball. The Broncos going Aaron Rodgers. This one to me is the most like likely scenario because of what you see with the Denver Broncos and their offense and they're like literally ready to go. They are in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers situation where they just need a good quarterback to come in and lead this team to a Super Bowl because you got Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick, Noah Fant, a decent enough offensive line. You could use your first round selection on an offensive lineman, kind of like what the Bucs did to get Tristan Wirfs in there. But yeah, that's, a, that's a really ideal scenario for Aaron Rodgers to go to. And then let's see, finally, he's got the Steelers. Marcus Mariota! Oh, dude! <laughs> I actually like that one a lot. That one actually makes a lot of sense too because he's a free agent and he would make a ton, like he would be an ideal uh, put into that offense with Matt Canada. And he really deserves a starting role and they're probably not gonna be able to get like Huntley or anything like that. And the Ravens wouldn't trade him over to the Steelers. I could see Huntley going over to the NFC side, maybe to uh, the Seattle Seahawks could make, you know, maybe a possibility there if he doesn't go quarterback in the draft. But Marcus Mariota, someone I've been watching too with the Raiders tape and he, they've been utilizing him a lot as a running quarterback quarterback and options and stuff like that but I do think he should get a starting gig somewhere so that's going to be something to keep a monitor on I like that fit a lot there and going through I just wanted to, wouldn't want to make sure I missed anything one thing I will say is I think Jimmy G could be a potential on the move I do think Trey Lance 
we'll be probably given the keys next year, but that's something to monitor. But really interesting to look at all the possibilities at the quarterback predictions for this offseason. I might have to do this too. This is actually pretty, I like this a lot. Anyway, uh, let's get into it here. This is draft now. Kayvon Thibodeau going number one overall, not a big surprise. You could talk about Evan Neal, but I think it's between Thibodeau, Hutchinson, and Neal for them and the Jaguars at this number one overall selection. If they don't trade down, and there are no trades, of course, in this, so I don't want to, you know, but Kayvon Thibodeau, number one overall, don't have a problem if you want to put him next to Josh Allen, and you have a really, really good defensive line for the next four or five years with those guys. I think they need to re-sign Josh Allen for sure. Thibodeau and Allen would make a big time strength on that defense. Ultimately, it's between Evan Neal and one of these edge rushers, though, for me at this number one overall select. On to number two. This is another one of those where it's like the Jaguars don't go with, with one of those edge rushers. Probably the Lions are going to take the other one, right? With Aiden Hutchinson here on the board, they're going to snag him. Kyle Hamilton, definitely a possibility. Like, let's not say that that's impossible because the Lions could look at Kyle Hamilton as a generational level safety and they say, you know what? His talent is so unbelievable that we're going to take Kyle Hamilton. They need safety really bad, especially if they weren't able, if they're not able to acquire Tracy Walker back in offseason, then Kyle Hamilton could like legit be a must take for them. But ultimately, I think they settle in on one of these edge rushers at, you know, the second overall pick on oh, the Houston Texans going with a Kent McQuamu. Wow. So they've gone Thibodeau in the first two selections for uh, Space goes, but now he is going to be taking a Kent McQuamu offense alignment over Evan Neal. I don't hate this because Akema Kwamu is he is very much in the level of Evan Neal. I think Evan Neal is still a better prospect I would say but Akema Kwamu for some people is going to be higher on their board. You're seeing guys like even like Dane Brugler or who I mean there's a lot of people out there I'm not sure off the top of my head but I've seen people put Akema Kwamu higher than Evan Neal so and legit analysts too like they're not you know the Evan Neal and Akema Kwamu it is close man. Akema Kwamu has really risen and he is one heck of a dude out there so it wouldn't surprise me i like evan neal i i'm actually um, charles cross is kind of my number one tackle right now actually. everyone's got different opinions but i think one of those three guys is what the houston texans need period they need offensive line so however you see it and on to the new york jets and going stingley is there a better number first pick for the jets no there isn't i 100 percent agree with this space goes i am right there with you on this one he's my favorite player in the draft class i'm hoping i know people have a strong opinions on stingley whether or not the injuries the ankle is concerning it's something i'm gonna monitor but for me I'm not going to let that stop me from drafting him. He's just my, he, I think he is the best player in this draft class. Look at, you know, the traits, of course, are amazing, but also the tape when you turn on the film. He is locked down, and I know the ankle concerns. He was a little injured, banged up. Devontae Smith took him a little bit to town last year, but you could tell he was not 100% in that game. I think when he is healthy, he is the best player defensive player in this draft class and that's over some tough guys with Aiden Hutchinson and Kayvon Thibodeau so I, I love this pick and I hope the Jets do it I really do on to the Seattle Seahawks and going Evan Neal first step in a rebuild I love this pick this is great if you're Seattle and you get this fifth overall pick you are absolutely I have no problem with saying, you know what? We're going to wait on the quarterback position. Maybe we can go give up a second rounder that we just acquired from the Giants to go get Taylor, Tyler Huntley and, you know, go from there. But if not, no big deal. Like Evan Neal is going to be able to come in here and at least give you a foundation for your left tackle for the future with Dwayne Brown getting older on and a free agent. Evan Neal is a slam dunk pick for the Seattle team and a start to their rebuild. Uh, that is an apps that that would be an, a dream come true for the Seattle Seahawks. But I love the bold move there by the Seattle Seahawks and the Giants to get that deal done. It's definitely something to monitor. I am I'm I'm telling you, it, it's gonna be a crazy crazy offseason mainly because you have like three stud quarterbacks that could be on the move this offseason so let's see who the Carolina Panthers going Malik Willis let's go biggest impact quarterback coming to Carolina this would be an awesome one to me I, I think that this is if you're Carolina yes you might say well he's a little raw and, and people can have their opinions on Malik Willis just like all these quarterbacks some people have Malik Willis as their number one quarterback, and some people are going to have him as like their fifth quarterback. You can take a look across the boards out there with different analysts. It just kind of depends. It's going to be very, very dependent on the Senior Bowl, too, coming up here later on this month. Is it the end of the month, or is it early February? I have to take a look at the schedule. I think it's the end of the month. Typically, it is around that time frame. Malik Willis is going to be able to come in with this offense. You've got some weapons to help him out. The offensive line is going to be something they're going to need to help him with, but Malik Willis is kind of, you know, I mean, hey, he's... 
He's a little bit familiar with bad offensive lines, and he can scramble. That's going to help him in this team a lot, and they can use him and Christian McCaffrey as a kind of power run unit there, too. And you have to respect DJ Moore out there, too, on the outside, Terrence Marsh, Robbie Anderson. So I like this pick a lot for the Carolina Panthers. The New York Jets going to Kobe D. I've seen this one recently with a PFF mock draft. Success depends on a healthy Jets defensive line. For sure does. And their linebacker position, it is so bad, man. Now, now, one thing I will say for the Jets is if you're going to select Nicobe Dean here at seven overall, I would probably look to trade down if possible because I do think it's a little early for Dean. And I do get scared with linebackers personally, just mainly because I think they're so hard to evaluate. So if you're going to take one in the top 10, you better have like a Mark, Micah Parsons level skill set where you can be a blitzer or an edge rusher, if nothing else. That's the one thing I'll say about Nicobe Dean. I don't know if he has that sort of ability, even though he kind of has a similar vibes to Devin White sort of what he can do to your on your defense so uh, however you look at Nicobe Dean in that retrospect I think could be a big time asset to your defense ultimately I do think it's a little early but uh, Kobe Dean is someone the Jets desperately need like we really need a guy like that on that defense like it has been so bad at stopping the run mainly because our linebackers it's not been great and we do have some young guys out there between Sherwood and uh, Nosler Dean maybe those guys can develop along there but we, we really do need uh, someone at linebacker that we feel better about on to the Giants here and they're going Tyler Lindenbaum this is this is the great picks and see this would be great if you get Russell Wilson and Tyler Lindenbaum with those first two picks oh my gosh Super Bowl Saquon long overdue enforcer dude this would be oh I love it I think the Giants really need to do it. and you say well it's too early at eight overall to take a center not Tyler Lindenbaum he in my view is going to make the biggest day one impact out of all these offensive linemen period enough said I'm done with the pick I'm salivating from the mouth right now. This is what I want to see. Russell Wilson, Tyler Lindebaum. You got weapons on offense. Their defense is good. Like it's, you know, maybe not elite, but it's pretty dang good. Yeah, that's awesome, man. On to the Washington football team going. Charles Cross, offensive lineman from Mississippi State. As I was saying earlier, he is my number one offensive lineman right now, or number one tackle, pardon me. I, I really love his footwork, man. I just have fallen in love with this game. He reminds me a lot of kind of like Rashawn Slater coming out. Maybe like a Rashawn Slater light. I want to say, I don't think he He's the level of Rashawn Slater in terms of his technical nuance as a pass protector, but he is getting there, man. He whooped Will Anderson. Let's just put it that way. That's on his resume. Just like you could say that Rashawn Slater whooped Chase Young or Charles Cross whooped Will Anderson. So that's basically what you got there. Quarterback one makes huge jump in year number two as a starter. Uh, it's possible for sure, but, and they could be also in the running for one of those free agent quarterbacks. On to number 10 and Atlanta Falcons luck into Kyle Hamilton, who is falling down the board right into their lap Kyle Pitts of the defense <laughs> it's a good actually it's a good analysis he is that jacker that dude who brings you a unique skill set on your your defense side of the ball or on your football team in general they need playmakers on that Atlanta Falcons defense the defense has been neglected over the years it is time that they go out and get the best defense available player they need to rebuild that defense and Matt Ryan you can say what you want he's getting older but he is not the reason why they are losing games in my opinion they need help on defense they've consistently ranked in the bottom five to ten defenses over the past Past five years it is time to help out that team and that secondary or defensive line they need help the biggest impact Kyle Hamilton being available here it's an easy pick uh, Broncos going George Harloftis and Bronco Billy <laughs> <laughs> Bronco Billy, that's a good one. Uh, but, uh, in, you know, after getting Aaron Rodgers, right? So he got Aaron Rodgers to the Broncos. You go out and get yourself another edge rusher here to pair up with Bradley Chubb and uh, Jonathan Cooper and Malik Reed. I think Malik Reed's a free agent. Don't quote me on that. But you get some more edge rush. That is never a problem here. And George Karloftis. Plus, he's going to be able to play in Vic Fangio's defense in like a 3-5 tech sort of role as well, depending on the down and distance. So they can utilize him in both ways there. Improve their defensive line some more for the Denver Broncos. On to the Minnesota Vikings going Garrett Wilson. Oh, tell me about it, G. Sle yeah, oh, yes, that's what I was saying in the mock draft. I put Garrett Wilson because I do think the Vikings are in a situation where you're just taking the best available player at 12 overall and the value for a guy like Garrett Wilson to pair him along with Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen. Thielen is still really, really good. He is getting a little bit older now and injuries are going to start creeping up and creeping up. And it's like, if you lose Thielen, getting a guy like Wilson, if nothing else to play in the slot next to to those two guys on the outside with Jefferson and Thielen, you've got a insane receiving core 
and something to build upon as hopefully that offensive line can continue to develop. They've got a lot of youth there. I know they need secondary help. Look, you got second and third round selections. You got free agency. Things are going to be able, you're going to work some things out there and we can always double dip at the cornerback position later. A lot of teams know that in front of them. So maybe you see a run on corners just like we did with Dallas because everyone mocked him a corner and, you know, and then they ended up going with Micah Parsons, best available player basically at that point. And the Vikings could do a similar sort of thing, especially if you start to see a run on some of those players. On to the Cleveland Browns after going, you know, seeing Garrett Wilson go off the board. They're taking David Ajabo. Hey, I don't have a problem with this one, especially if Clowney's gone after this season. A Chabo next to Miles Garrett would be an insane one-two punch of speed and power combination, giving the AFC North no time to throw. I mean, seriously, you, you've seen what this Cleveland team has been able to do. And, you know, any team that's gone up against them who doesn't have a good offensive line, who cannot slow down Miles Garrett, they get stone wrecked up on their offensive line. Good David Ajabo, now it's just gonna have it and be a more of a problem. So I don't have a problem with this one. They need receivers, it's their biggest need, but with Garrett Wilson just going off the board, maybe say, well, we don't, you know, Jamison Williams, it, it, it's, uh, it's it is a tough one. I think Jameson Williams probably still someone I'd be looking at, but you know, hey, David Ajabo, I don't have a problem going after the edge position, especially if they're able to go out in free agency and get Devontae Adams because Aaron Rodgers is now gone and maybe Browns lure Devontae Adams over. So, you know, there's a lot of different possibilities. Eagles going to Marvin Leal though, youth power versatility. That is absolutely what he brings in here for this Philadelphia defense and they need some more edge rushing help or even interior defensive line because you look at Fletcher Cox, he's a free agent next season, something like that. Devon Hargrave too as well. So they, you know, they've invested it with the Milton Williams who, you know, starting to come along a little bit, but DeMarvin Leal, I ultimately like him as that potential strong side edge with Josh Sweat. I think that'd be a really good one to punch. Onto the New Orleans Saints here, and they're going to go with Jamison <laughs> Jamison Williams is down there somewhere. Oh man, that's crazy. Joe Burrow, that's, hey, he's taking a page out of Joe Burrow's book here, but the Saints need receiver. I mean, Jamison Williams, let's lock it in. They need someone there. <laughs> Kyer Elam, solid, much needed depth. And They've been so decimaled with injuries in that Baltimore secondary, and you can see it too over these past. It's not just been because Lamar Jackson's been injured. This defense does not look the same without these guys. They need cornerback help. They need depth. They need something, man. And Marcus Peters coming up on a contract soon uh, in, what, a year or so. And then also he's just getting a little bit older. So maybe, you know, it's time to find yourself a third corner and eventual starter there with Marlon Humphrey for the long term. Kyer Elam would be a perfect fit, too, in this Baltimore Ravens defense. Uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. Devin Lloyd solidified the steel curtain. Whoa, that's an inch. I didn't expect this one from Space Ghost, but... Devin Lloyd next to Devin Bush. You got the two Devins out there. They do need linebacker help. I'm not going to lie. They need some linebacker help. Uh, but they did sign Joe Schobert to a long-term deal or what, next three, four seasons, something like that. Don't know if it's their biggest area of need, but just depends on how you feel about Devin Bush. Who They're probably going to let him go maybe even at some point. And maybe it could be even a trade, especially if they bring in Devin Lloyd. So something to keep a monitor on there. Devin Lloyd, though, really, really good player. Linebacker out of Utah. They solidify that steel curtain as his space goes as I love it, dude. That is an interesting pick. I've not seen that one at all. Devin Lloyd to the Pittsburgh Steelers. He does seem like a Pittsburgh Steelers. I would have actually, if I had to pick Devin Lloyd or Devin Bush, I think Devin Lloyd would be a perfect fit for that Steeler defense. Like he feels a lot more like a Steeler than Devin Bush would have, you know, coming out there. But anyway, that's an interesting pick. On to the Raiders going Sauce Gardner here. Secondary help wanted. <laughs> and this is one of those two. I'm looking at this roster right now currently. I might actually look at this because the value at corner 18 overall, you're looking it's between receiver and corner for me in this team because mainly at the value at 18, you're looking at either the third best receiver or the third best corner off the board. So getting someone like Sauce Gardner or Traylon Burks, I think is the best option. You got Casey Hayward, who is a free agent this season. Desmond Trufant is a free agent this season. They need a long-term answer at that cornerback one, two position with Taewon Mullen. Got your slot position position with Nate Hobbs, you find yourself a beast with Sauce Gardner there. Anyway, let's go on to the Philadelphia Eagles, and they're going with Andrew Booth Jr., the corner out of Clemson. Lockdown combo, a combination, hit him with the combination. Ali moving in on London. A fuselage of punches by Muhammad Ali. London goes down. I like it. Andrew Booth would be coming in here. And I know people will talk about him and they're going to have different views on Andrew Booth. Well, he's a little bit raw. Maybe there's not enough consistency. I watch him and I watch the way he plays and the way he moves. 
and he is a first round corner. I think he's a top 20 player. I just think he is going to be a type of dude that might take a year to develop. He has the skill set to be a really, really good corner, and I could see him being someone like an AJ Terrell to make a same school comparison, yes, but I could see him taking that sort of development to his game. Really, really smooth corner. I love the fit here for the Eagles too, just getting themselves a true number one to pair along with some of that youth that they've gone after. And then also whether or not they bring back Darius Slay or Steven Nelson. Moving on though here to the Chargers and they're gonna be taking big Jordan Davis. Uh, legitimize the light and D line. And that's what they, yeah, dude. Arms don't seem to have an answer for Dunham, who's averaging close to 12 yards a carry this half. <laughs> He would do that. They need some help there on that interior defensive line. And you got big Jordan Davis to legitimize that defensive line. And they'll be lighting up people, man. You get that secondary clean in Brandon Staley's defense. That's a good pick. I mean, this is going to be one of those that between Jordan Davis, defensive line help, just trying to find some more interior guys, get them that defense over the edge there. And we talk about this with the Chargers. Like, they now have their friend franchise quarterback. They've got some weapons on offense. Their offensive line in general is looking better. Talk about defense winning championships. I know that phrase gets thrown out there a lot, but this is kind of my view. I think it's so important to go after offense first when you're in a rebuild. Find your franchise quarterback. Find your quarterback. Give your quarterback weapons and time to throw the ball. And then what ultimately separates a team from becoming a championship team is their defense. Because when you get into the playoffs, most of these teams, especially when you get into the conference championship, they all have good offenses, man. They really all do. But what gets you over the hump is having that elite defense or having that good defense, right? You don't have to have an elite defense, but you need to have a good defense. And that is what the Chargers can do here by adding in someone like Jordan Davis to help that defense align out. On to the Philadelphia Eagles here, going Traylon Burks, basically just saying, hey, we're gonna take best available, elite size and power, absolutely. He's gonna be, he's gonna win at the vertical route tree. He is just too big, too powerful, too fast not to win off in that, the edge. And he's gonna be a perfect complement with Devontae Smith as that route runner combination with him and Burks. I don't have a problem with this one. He is, he's, he's gonna be really good, man. He's gonna be a mismatch nightmare for whatever cornerback has to go up against him. I can't wait to see him go up against Jalen Ramsey at the next level. That's gonna be a fun sight to see how he can handle physicality with Jalen Ramsey there. On to the Miami Dolphins, and they're gonna be going with Bernhard Raymond to help that young offensive line, add another addition to that young offensive line. And Bernhard Raymond, to me, is a way better prospect than what they've been drafting over the years. You know, Miami Dolphins fans are saying, well, go pick up some veterans. And I agree with that. They need some veteran help on that offensive line, but it's not gonna stop me from drafting another offensive line. And I like Bernhard Raymond a ton. And what he's developed as, and what he's become over the seasons too, his footwork is night and day above anybody that they've drafted. I just don't think he's gonna be a bust. So that's why I'm saying like, I wouldn't have a problem with them selecting Bernhard Raymond. And I know they've invested in a ton. They've invested as much as the Philadelphia Eagles have, and they just haven't hit on those picks, which is unfortunate. You can't look back on that. You can't dwell back on the past. You gotta look forward to the future. You gotta keep on trying to improve that offensive line because they cannot throw the ball. They don't have enough time to throw the ball deep. And you have Jalen Waddle out here who can win deep. They need to give him some time so that way Tua can get the ball to Jalen Waddle deep make that open up that offense some more because when they can open up that offense Miami has a lot more potential to be a legit caliber team on to the New England Patriots going Chris Olave the receiver of course from Ohio State this is the one piece they're missing on that receiving core is a consistent deep threat someone who can win in the vertical route tree and not just that I mean he can win everywhere he's one of the smoothest route runners in this draft I'm sure you're going to hear that and you probably heard it over and over again he wins he wins at a at multitude levels across the NFL field. I don't think he's a number one receiver, but that's fine the way New England utilizes their receiver. It's like probably would be a perfect fit for this offense and help out Mac Jones in that vertical game because Mac Jones can throw the ball deep. It just, he doesn't have really that consistent deep ball guy yet. You get in Chris Olave, I think he would be able to, to get you there. On to the Arizona Cardinals going Kenyon Green. High value at 24, the mean Kenyon Green, of course. I love it, dude. You need offensive line for this Arizona team. And I, I if, if Kenyon Green falls to you, plus he gets some versatility, maybe he can be your future right tackle. He kind of has similar vibes to like an Elton Jenkins type coming out. I think he could play anywhere across your offensive line. You know, the Arizona Cardinals need that right now. Their offensive line has just not been good enough. They've been okay. Like they've been able to get by with some veterans over the years, but you're starting to get into that Pittsburgh Steelers sort of. I'm, I'm serious. Like I really mean this. 
Arizona, if they're not careful, they could end up like the Pittsburgh Steelers in a year or two if they do not start investing in that offensive line sooner rather than later. They are aging a lot in that interior offensive line and at right tackle, you name it, across the offensive line, except for DJ Humphrey. They need help. I mean, you got Jonathan Jones. But other than that, like, is he a solidified starter for you? You need some more help on that offensive line. Invest in it. Invest in it now before it gets too late and before it comes a problem. On to number 25, Roger McCreary can play inside and out depending on White's return. White can play inside and out too, so you can interchange these guys. I like this pickup too. You need more cornerback help. Levi Wallace may be on the out this soft season. You get yourself another corner here, and he is the best available too at this point at 25. I think this is a slam dunk pick, especially with Kenyon Green off the board now. Uh, Bengals going Nicholas Petit for year protect the <laughs> but that's not coming out of my nose that's gonna be that's a good one for joe burrow I, that may be his nickname for joe burrow now the tiger king i don't know but nicholas petit freer i prefer someone like bernhard raymond here at this point the value for nicholas petit freer whether or not he does have the tools to be a first rounder I just don't necessarily like his game enough to take him in the first round for me personally, but they do need some more offensive line help. Uh, linebackers are off the board here at this point. A lot of the receiver, well, they don't need receiver really. I mean, unless you want to really, <laughs> that'd be unbelievable. Go and add another receiver. So maybe Nicholas Petit Freer is someone that they value. I'm just, again, not quite there on Nicholas as a first rounder yet, but they do need to fix that right tackle position for the future and maybe another guard position or center position. On to the Dallas Cowboys going Travon Walker, the edge rusher here out of Georgia. Another piece to a star-studded D. Whew, man, this would be an insane defensive line, man, with Trayvon Walker. I've been watching this guy, and I am a huge fan of his game. I legit think he could be in the range of a Kayvon Thibodeau, of an Aiden Hutchinson, if he were to get more reps on the outside, more one-on-one -on -one reps. He just doesn't get the opportunities that those guys have. So if you were, to, if he were to come back at Georgia for another offseason with some depleted defensive line that they're going to be losing so many players in the draft, he would get a lot more op opportunities and he could eventually be a top five, top 10 pick. I think he has the tools to be in that conversation with Will Anderson next year. Trayvon Walker would be a slam dunk pick on this defensive line. You could move him inside and out on Dan Quinn's defensive line. On Stan Bay Buccaneers, George Pickens. People are sleeping on number one. He's a oh, ow. Oh, ow, I gotta get I gotta talk to Garrett about this, but does he have Garrett or George Pickens as his number one receiver? I don't hate it. I really don't. George Pickens, he has that AJ Green vibes. He's not like unbelievable in one category. But all around to his game, what he can bring into your offense, he has that sort of vibe. And I think that he can be the player who could be your true X on the outside and in the perimeter. He's going to be able to work in the slot too, multiple positions. He could, he moves well enough across the field, in and out of his breaks. He needs to, I would say he needs to improve his route tree, he needs to improve his route running in general. Sometimes can get a little sloppy there, but man, he has the catch radius. He has the speed to be a true number one. This would be an amazing pick. I mean, especially let go Chris Godwin. They lost into Antonio Brown, they need more receiver help maybe. George Pickens, rock and roll for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now on to the Kansas City Chiefs here, and the Chiefs are going to be going with Jaquan Brisker. Brisker out of Penn State, adding in some more help onto that defense with the Honey Badger. It'd be a really good combination. Actually, kind of would remind, remind me a little bit of like the Packers and what they have there with uh, Darnell Savage and Adrian Amos. I think it's kind of that similar skill set. And this is a team too that utilizes three safeties a lot. Daniel Swordson probably on the way out. You got to go ahead and add some more secondary help. Jaquan Brisker, don't have a problem with this one. It's either defensive line or on at safety. Really, really good safety. On to hey, Kenny Pickett, the golden ticket. Space Ghost is going to be taking him here for the Detroit Lions off the board. And we haven't even mentioned Kenny Pickett or the golden ticket. Only one quarterback, I think, off the board so far, right? Malik Willis, yeah, it's the Panthers. So the second quarterback off the board at 30 overall here to the Detroit Lions. And I, but yeah, just really, I mean, it depends on how you view Kenny Pickett, of course. Detroit Lions fans will sure have their opinions on what they should be doing at the second overall pick or the second first round pick, whether it's getting a receiver, whether it's getting a safety or a linebacker in terms of realistic wise I think there's a good chance the lions do take a quarterback at their second first rounder but that is something tbd man it just depends on how they feel about jared goff i would say if they were to go with that second you know, with a quarterback in their second first round you maybe you're talking with a guy who can sit for a year, maybe have some upside, things like that. Even though Kenny Pickett's still pretty dang good, man. On to the 10. Brandon Smith off the board here. The third linebacker for the Tennessee Titans. Speed burst. <laughs> I'm hitting the left trigger here. I got the got the controller out here. You hit the left trigger. Actually, that's the right trigger, but boom. Brandon Smith is the definition of that. And uh, actually, is speed burst the right trigger or the left trigger? I forget it, man. Linebacker is going to be a decision, you know, whether or not you like Monty Rice enough to start him. David Long, Jayon Brown, do you bring those guys back? You know, no, I'm really interested in 
in general, where the Tennessee Titans are going to consider going in this draft class because they're in a weird spot where it's like a lot of positions are like, well, they're not terrible, but at the same time, you could make an upgrade. So I'm almost saying like the Tennessee Titans are in a situation where you're just trying to take the best available player maybe. And this could be a team that could surprise some people and even try to get into the quarterback market, especially being a devalued quarterback class. They could look at someone like Malik Willis or like a Matt Corral if one of those guys drops to them. Because you never do know with Tannehill coming up on a contract, do they end up giving him another contract? I think it's very likely, but they could be a team that goes after a lot of different positions. In this case, going after Brandon Smith and another linebacker. And we're going to finish it up here with a monster pick in the Road Warrior. It's going to be Jermaine Johnson here to the Green Bay Packers. It's a good pick, man. It's a good pick. I think they need some more edge rushing help, especially with both Smiths probably going to be gone after this season, at least rumors. We'll see what happens. They'll probably be able to address some things in free agency too, but you get in someone with super long arms, length there, and get yourself a good edge rusher to pair along with Rashawn Gary. To me, it's between the edge rushing position and it's also between the receiver position to help out Jordan Love, maybe, as your future quarterback, as listed here, of course, by Space Ghost. And I don't disagree with that either. I think he has a very good chance of taking over next season for Aaron Rodgers. Jermaine Johnson going to be the final pick of this draft for this team. And that is how it all rolls out. But wait, there's more. There's more. <laughs> and Jahan Johnson to the Jaguars. So this is one of his bonus picks. So he's got four extra bonus picks, as we were saying earlier. Weapon for Trevor. That's something sums it up perfectly. I don't need to say anymore. The one hit, I think he is one of the best making defenders look foolish. He has plays on film where it's just like the corner. They just go down. They just drop down. They're like, oh, my ankle, bro, coach. I can't do it. It was, a, it was an accident. But no, he legit is an unbelievable separator. Jahan Dotson, keep an eye out for this guy. I think he's got maybe Kadarius Tony light movement skills, and he is better catching the football than Kadarius Tony. Really think he could be a guy that could come out here. And if you're looking for that Odell Beckham one-handed like spectacular catch guy, he could be the dude there to keep a close eye out on. Jahan Dotson off the board here, pick number 33. Onto the Detroit Lions now going with a receiver. And they're going to be finding that weapon for Kenny Pickett in the future with Drake London. I love him and his game. Big body target he can bring to this team. Oh my God. Aiden Hutchinson, Kenny Pickett, and now Drake London. This guy can dance, dude. For six foot five, 215 pounds, he can move really well. He's great after the catch. You wouldn't suspect it for a guy this size. He maybe doesn't have the vertical route tree and he can move in terms of those slants and getting off press. You cannot press this guy, man. So Drake London, I love the pickup here. On to the New York Jets going Daxton Hill, utility knife. Oh, I like that. That is a good one. Um, utility knife, absolutely. He's going to be able to come up on this defense and Robert Salah's scheme. He's going to be able to play all over the board too. Uh, going with defense, adding some more secondary helps. And they got Stingley, N'Kobe Dean, and Daxon Hill completely rejuvenalizing this defense with some young talent, some young secondary help here to help out this defense. I don't mind it, man. I, I would say I would like to go with one of those picks on the offense side of the ball. But ultimately, we do need some help on the defense, man. I mean, it is pretty bad. And then, oh, Seattle going with Matt Corral. Let's go. Corral off the board. Start of a new era for the Seattle Seahawks. They are taking Golden Corral off the board. Oh man, that's one of those where you could see it. I think this would be a really interesting one for Pete Carroll or whoever the coach is here. If Pete Carroll is gone. There's a good chance that Pete Carroll is gone if Russell Wilson is gone too. Matt Corral would be the start for the future after going with the offensive line and Evan Neal and then coming away with Matt Corral. I think that is a great draft for the Seattle Seahawks. Like that is one of the best drafts in this class. I think they did a great job to be able to do that. Plus they got another second rounder, right? That they were able to pick up in the Giants pick. So I think they did a great job picking up Evan Neal and Matt Corral. That is some fire to finish up this draft here for the Seattle Seahawks. I think that is it. Thanks and happy new year. I love it, man. Space Ghost coming out with some more fire as always. Space Ghost rocking and rolling. I hope you are rocking and rolling. I appreciate it, Space Ghost, man. That was an awesome mock draft. Anyway, I hope you have a really good day and everything. My name is G-Sling. I'm doing my thing and I hope you do too. And I'll talk to you later.